Hello boys and girls, I am Mother Goose and today I have picked this letter from the alphabet. It's the letter S. S stands for snake and for sunshine and for snow. Let's sing our ABC song together. Are you ready? Here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, L, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? <laughs> I could hear you singing. You sounded great. Sing starts with the letter S too, doesn't it? And snowman starts with the letter S. I have a wonderful little book I'd like to share with you today. It's called Frosty the Snowman. Here we go. Once upon a time, a long time ago, it was winter and the first snowfall of the season fell. Now, all boys and girls know that the first snowfall is magical, boys and girls, especially when it happens the day before Christmas. It was the last day of school before Christmas vacation, and the teacher said, Boys and girls, I have a surprise for you. Professor Hinkle will now do a magic show. <laughs> The boys and girls knew Professor Hinkle was the worst magician in the world. Well, Professor Hinkle took off his hat and he said, I will now throw an egg into my hat. And he did. Then he took his magic wand and said, Abracadabra. Then he said, I will now pull a rabbit from my hat. But when he reached in his hat, all that was in it was a sticky, messy, broken egg. Well, then he said, all this hat is good for is, is the trash. And he threw it right into the trash can. He didn't know his pet rabbit named Hocus Pocus was hiding up in the magic hat. <laughs> so the hat hopped right out of the trash can and hop, hop, hopped across the classroom and out the door. And Mr. Hinkle ran after his hat. Then the school bell rang. Bring! And all the boys and girls knew it was the start of Christmas vacation. They ran outside to see the beautiful, fresh winter snowfall. And they all worked together and made a snowman. And a little girl named Karen said, let's name him Frosty, Frosty the Snowman. And after they made their snowman, they danced around him and sang about him like this. Frosty the snowman was a jolly happy soul with a corn cob pipe and a button nose and two eyes made out of coal. Well, then came Mr. Hinkle, still chasing his hat, and a gust of wind came up and blew that hat right on top of Frosty the snowman's head. And Frosty said, Happy birthday. Karen said, oh, That hat made Frosty come alive. It must really be magical. And when Mr. Hinkle heard that, he ran over to that snowman and he grabbed that hat off Frosty's head and he said, Give me that hat. I can make millions of dollars with this magic hat. Well, Hocus Pocus the bunny thought that hat should belong to Frosty. And Karen said, it's not your hat anymore, it's Frosty's. And then Hocus Pocus saved the day. He ran after Mr. Hinkle and he got that hat back and he hop, hop, hopped back to the children. And Karen put the hat back on Frosty's head. And then he said, happy birthday. Those were my first words, I'm alive. What a neat thing to happen to a nice guy like me. And all the boys and girls danced and played with Frosty. Oh, it was the most wonderful winter afternoon. But it started to get hot. And Frosty said, oh, I'm getting all wishy-washy. We better run and play before I melt away. And then Karen said, we 
better get frosty somewhere where it's cold, like the North Pole. I know. Let's take him down to the train station and get him on a train heading north. Then Frosty said, Okay, everybody, follow me. He led them down the streets of town, right to the train station, where Frosty got on a refrigerator car that would keep him cool. And Hocus Pocus the Bunny hopped on, and so did Karen. But nobody saw Mr. Hinkle. He climbed underneath the refrigerator car, and he held on tight. Then he could go with Frosty and his friends. When they got to the North Pole, oh, Frosty was so happy because the refrigerator car kept him good and cold. And Hocus Pocus was happy because he had a fur coat and he felt comfortable. But Karen was just a little girl and she was freezing and her teeth were chattering. Then Frosty took his friends out into the beautiful woods to meet all the wild animals who were decorating the trees in the woods for Christmas. Now Hocus Pocus could talk animal talk. So he told those wild animals to build a little fire so that Karen could get warmed up. And they did. And just when she got nice and warm, she looked up on the hill and she saw Mr. Hinkle just sitting down on his bottom getting ready to slide down the hill and get his hat back from Frosty. Now Frosty the snowman was the fastest belly whopper in the world. So Frosty said, hop on my shoulders, Karen. And she did. And then Frosty laid on his belly and slid down that hill fast as a speeding bullet. And when they got to the bottom, there was a little greenhouse. It was warm inside so that beautiful red poinsettia flowers could grow right there in the middle of the snowy forest. And Frosty said, let's go inside, Karen. Well, you can warm up again in there. You better not come in, Frosty. It might be too warm for you. Oh, I'll only stay a minute, said Frosty. So they went inside the nice warm greenhouse but Mr. Hinkle locked them in, boys and girls. Frosty did get hot, and he melted into a big puddle of water. And Karen started to cry. <laughs> My poor friend, Frosty. <laughs> but just then, Hocus Pocus saved the day again. He had gone and gotten Santa Claus to help them. And Santa said, Oh, 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 Karen, don't cry. Why, Frosty the Snowman was made out of magical Christmas snow. As soon as the cold December wind blows across that puddle, he'll come back. Watch. Santa opened the door to the greenhouse, and the cold wind blew in right over that puddle, and Frosty came back. Well. Santa was just going to put the magic hat on Frosty so he could come alive again when Mr. Hinkle came running up and said, Give me my hat. Santa said, Mr. Hinkle, if you ever want another Christmas present from me, you will go home right now and write, I am sorry for what I did to Frosty the Snowman a hundred zillion times, then maybe, just maybe, you'll find something in your Christmas stocking on Christmas morning. Well, Mr. Hinkle ran right home, boys and girls, and started to write. Then Santa put the magic hat on Frosty's head, and he came alive and said, Happy birthday! Karen was so glad to see her friend back. And Santa said, oh, 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 we better get home now. So he put Frosty and Karen in his sleigh, and they took Karen right back to her house. She was sad to say goodbye to Frosty. And Santa said, don't worry, Karen. I'm going to take Frosty home with me to the North Pole, where I'll keep him good and cold. And don't worry, you'll see Frosty again 
every year at Christmas time with the first Christmas snow. So they flew away and Frosty waved goodbye to her. And guess what, boys and girls? Every Christmas, Santa's promise came true and Frosty did come back. The end. Isn't that a darling, beautiful little story about snow and the snowman? <laughs> Would you like to do a little snow magic this morning? I'm in the mood for snow magic. I've got my magic pan here, my friends. It is empty. As you know, we never know what's going to appear in the magic pan. Now, in this little bag, I have some snow from the North Pole. I got a big handful as I left when I visited my sister, Mrs. Claus. It never melts. I am gonna pour this in the magic pan. Now you watch, the snow looks pretty. Whee, ooh, snow looks sparkly when it falls. There we go. Now we have to put the lid on the pan. There it is. Now my friends, for magic words today, we'll count to three and we'll say, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Ready? One, two, three. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. <laughs> Good. Oh, I hope it worked, don't you? Let's see. It did, my darlings. Oh, it's so cute. A little snowman. Isn't he cute? Golly. And he's even got a little sign that says, Merry Christmas. Did you build a snowman when it was Christmas time up north in Flagstaff? <laughs> He's so cute. I think I'll stand him here by this other cute little snowman I have on my tray. Now, I think we ought to do another magic trick. Here's my big bag trick. Let's see what's in the bag. A scarf. What color? Oh, you're so smart. It's green like a Christmas tree. What color is that one, my friends? That's right, it's red, red like apples. And let's pull out the other scarf. What color is that? White, like snow. And the bag, my friends, is empty, nothing in the bag. Now, we're gonna put them back in. There goes the white one. There goes the red one. Here comes the green one. And we're going to count to three. And this time, let's say snowman. Let's say Frosty the snowman. That's even better. All right, count. One, two, three. Frosty the snowman. Very good. Oh, I wonder what we got. Ooh. Oh, it's a beautiful scarf. Ah. Red, green, and white. And on the scarf, ooh, is candy. Little candy canes. Did you have some candy canes at Christmas time from Santa? Let's see what else. Oh my goodness, boys and girls. <laughs> we got a snowball. I loved snowball fight. Have you ever had a snowball fight? You take snowballs, you make them as fast as you can, and then you throw them at your friends. But don't aim at their head. Yeah, you don't want to hurt them. Just throw them at their legs. I'm going to throw a snowball at you. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Try and catch it. Uh <laughs> and the bag is empty. Oh. You amaze me at how good you always are at magic. Give yourselves a round of applause. Good job. Guess what? I have another winter story for you. I love this story. It's called 
Little Bear's special friend. Do you have a little stuffed teddy bear? I do. Here we go. Once upon a time, Little Bear was sleeping in his cave. It was winter, but he woke up. So he thought it was spring because bears sleep all winter and get up in the spring. But when he got up and looked outside, it was still winter. Mmm, it's cold out here, said Little Bear. He went inside and tried to crawl back in his little bed and go back to sleep, but he just couldn't sleep. So he decided to go out into the winter snow and explore. And he sat down in the snow and said, I'm not going to have anybody to play with. All my little bear friends are asleep. They're not going to wake up till spring. What'll I do? And then all of a sudden he heard a little voice say, I'll be your friend. It was a little snowman. And he said, My name is Sparkly. And little bear said, well, I'm Little Bear. You want to play? Sure, said Sparkly. And Sparkly said, I'll show you how much fun winter can be. So they took a walk in the snow and they left their footprints in the snow. <laughs> and then they slid down slick hills, just like they were on a sled. And then they even picked icicles, and they took the pointed icicles and made pretty designs in the snow with them. And then they just stood in the snow and stuck out their tongues and let little snowflakes land on their tongue. <laughs> said Sparkly. Oh, that feels funny, said Little Bear. Then Sparkly said, that snow piled up on that tree. Oh, 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 oh! And all that snow came falling down on Little Bear. And Little Bear said, I look like a snow monster. Rawr. And he chased his friend Sparkly. Oh, they laughed and had so much fun, boys and girls. And by nighttime, it was still snowing. And the two friends stood in the snow and looked at the snowflakes coming down in the moonlight. And Little Bear said, Sparkly, you're my best friend. And you're mine, said Sparkly. And Little Bear gave Sparkly a bear hug. Well, the next day, Sparkly said, I'll introduce you to some other animals who stay up all winter. And they went to see Sammy the squirrel. And Sammy said, Hey, we can look for acorns that I hid in the, in the woods last fall. It'll be like hide and seek. <laughs> there you can see a little tiny acorn they found buried under the snow. Then they went to see Freddy Fox. And Freddy Fox was sliding on the ice. The pond was all frozen over. And Freddy said, uh, come on, come and slide on the ice with me. And then he sneezed. <gasps> <coughs> Sometimes that happens in winter air. Well, they all slid on the ice, and sometimes they'd fall down, but they'd just get back up again and slide some more and laughed and laughed. Then, at the end of the day, the four new friends all said how happy they were that they could play together that day. Soon, Sparkly said, Uh... Little Bear, I'm going to have to go away soon. Why? said Little Bear. Well, Little Bears sleep all winter, and Little Snowmen have to go away in the spring when it gets warm. It's just the way it is. Oh, I'm going to miss you, Sparkly. We'll never see each other then. Oh, good friends always find a way to be together. And then... The next day it was warmer, and the next day after that it was even warmer. And they started hearing the click, click, click 
of animals scurrying in the forest. I thought I heard that just a minute ago. Those clicking sounds came from new animals scurrying in the woods because the weather was getting warm. And the click, click sound was the snow melting and dropping down on the ground. Pretty soon the snow was all gone and green grass came out and flowers bloomed. And guess what? All the other bears woke up inside their caves. So Little Bear had new little bears to play with, but Sparkly was gone and he missed Sparkly. When he climbed trees looking for honey with his bear friends, he thought, Sparkly would like doing this. And when he swam in the pond with his little bear friends, he remembered how Sparkly and Freddy Fox and him had slid on that pond when it was frozen over. I oh, sure miss Sparkly, he thought. Well, even when he saw Freddy Fox and little Sammy Squirrel, they talk about how much they miss Sparkly. But then, my friends, like it does every year, it began to be fall again, and leaves fell off the trees. They turned red and orange and yellow. Oh, they were pretty. And the bears gathered up leaves and put them in their caves so they could lay on those nice, soft, warm leaves when they went to sleep for the winter in their caves. Little Bear went into his cave and fell fast asleep for the winter. But one day, he felt someone shaking him. Then he heard a voice, and the voice said, Wake up! Wake up, Little Bear! And when he opened his eyes, Little Bear saw his friend Sparkly. And Sparkly said, I woke you up kind of early so we could have some time to play together. And Little Bear was so happy and he said, You were right, Sparkly. Good friends find ways to be together. And the two friends walked outside into the beautiful, white, fluffy, falling snow. The end. Oh, I love this book, boys and girls, almost as much as I love you and almost as much as I love my teddy bear. <laughs> Can I show you my teddy bear? Here's my bear. Isn't he cute? I love him. You know, I thought maybe I should dress him for winter. Do you think I should? I got a little scarf for my bear, because you might have noticed in the book, there was a picture of Little Bear with his little scarf on. I want to get it straight. Can you see it? Yeah, there's his little winter scarf. Oh, that'll keep you warm. Then I should give him a winter hat, don't you think? I think so too. That cute, it's got a little ball on the end. And we'll put this over his ears. Gotta keep your ears warm when you go to play in snow, boys and girls. <laughs> ah, but you gotta see. There, now he can see. Oh, there, he's dressed for winter. Isn't he cute? And let's see, I wanna, oh, I'm gonna set him right here in my magic pan. Yeah. And I wanna show you something else. See this big snowball? Oh, it's a big one, isn't it? Do you see how it kind of sparkles in the light? Well, watch this. When I put my hand inside of this snowball, what? What? <laughs> it's a snowman. Isn't he cute? This snowman has a carrot nose and and so does this little snowman, and so does that other big snowman. Guess what I call him, my friends? Sparkly, like the snowman in the story, because he sparkles. I even made up a little song for him. Would you like to hear it? You would? Thank you. It goes like this. I'm a little snowman, a carrot for a nose. I got no feet and I got no toes. Sometimes I have stick arms and a big old hat, 
and when I melt, well, that is that. Good job, little snowman. Oh, look, he's waving at you, boys and girls. <laughs> Everybody say, bye, Sparkly. Bye-bye, Sparkly. Here, you can sit right here next to my bear. I guess I should name my bear Little Bear like the story, shouldn't I? And boys and girls, I just wanted to mention something that I think is amazing. See this pretty snowflake? Isn't that pretty and sparkly? Did you know, my friends, that every snowflake is different? There are not two snowflakes the same. Isn't that amazing? Because, oh my goodness, think of how many snowflakes fall from the sky every winter. I'm going to hang this on my tree next Christmas because I think it's so beautiful. Well, my darlings, it's about time for me to go now. That's everything I wanted to show you today. But let's sing our song together. It's called the Barney Song. Remember Barney? But it just explains how much I love you. If you remember it, sing along. I love you. You love me. We're a happy family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Won't you say you love me too? I hope you get a chance this winter to go play in the snow up north, boys and girls. And if you do, remember me and Frosty and Sparkly and Little Bear. Bye-bye, everyone.